Hey there, commercial construction coffee talk fans. Thanks for chiming in. My name's David Corson. and I'm your host. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction Renovation Magazine. This is what it used to look like. Uh, I just grabbed this one out. This was uh, November, December, 2018. It's Terry Micklin from Wawa when she was there. She's no, uh, I forget where she went, but anyway, Terry, thanks for gracing the cover. Uh, anyway, uh, this was uh, one of their uh, new flagship prototypes that they did way back when. And uh, anyway, uh, always nice. This issue was uh, 172 pages. And uh, let's uh, see what I was doing uh, way back when. Oh, I was uh, I was coaching uh, the select team uh, for the rec league. I don't know. Those might be seventh or eighth graders. Who knows? But uh, always had good teams, and I'll probably give them a rah rah. Go, come on, guys, we got to win this game. Dig deep. Let's let, let's get the W. But uh, anyway, uh, I always like holding the magazine because we went digital back in August of 2021. Was my last issue that I printed, and uh, went digital since and had uh another three plus million i think it was 3.2 or 3.4 i forget last month uh that hit the website a couple hundred thousand unique users so everybody out there on the web thanks for finding us and consuming our content uh you know couldn't do this without you so we really appreciate it so today i have a gentleman out on the island in puerto rico his name is uh manny ray he's the uh, owner and principal of 3mg and uh, they do uh, architecture, engineering, project management, and uh, is one of my advertisers. So, Manny, say hello to our audience out there at Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. Hello, everybody. I'm here in Puerto Rico and uh, doing my best to keep me young and going. So, uh, happy to be here. Yeah. What, what's the weather on the island today? Well, today it's around 88, 89, sunny. And uh, the ocean is a little bit choppy, but uh, it's really nice. It's really nice. Yeah, if I'll tell you. Been, if, if you've never been here, you know, I suggest you once once in your lifetime we come here and spend a couple of days. Uh, you know what? Uh, one of my uh, uh, other one of my subscribers, he's come to a couple of my events, uh, Herminia Pira, and he's at uh, Burger King and Popeyes. I think he's got some. Uh, he's got a couple hundred stores. Anyway. He's been bugging me to come to Puerto Rico. I've never been there. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, and and there's an architect uh, locally from Onyx. He grew up there, Javier Santos. And he's like, look, we'll go down. We'll we'll go for a weekend or whatever. So uh, I'm coming down. Puerto Rico, get ready, man, because the hockey lacrosse dude's coming down to the island. Because I've got, you know, it's, it's on my bucket list. It's not that three-hour flight, wherever, you know, Atlanta, you know, boom, boom, nonstop. And mm -hmm. uh want to go check the island out for sure. So, uh mm -hmm. And, uh, and and we'll, and and I always like uh, seeing people in person, so you can go in and show me some of your projects locally, sure. and and take me we, some local joints, and uh, you know uh, we, find uh, the food. And uh, yeah. all I've heard is good things about Puerto Rico: hospitality, friendly, the weather's great, beautiful, right? Beautiful, beautiful. You don't need, you don't need a passport. You know, you just you just come in with your driver's license. You know, it's 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 great. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, today I'll tell you, it's about 80 degrees. Uh, the humidity hasn't come yet, but it's coming in the next month or a month and a half. And uh, it's just been beautiful. It rained. Uh, well, it's been raining a lot here. So the lake is full, but uh, the weather is just beautiful right now. It's the best time to be in the south because right about in the middle of June, God just flicks the switch and the humidity comes in. It's like getting hit by a two by four and it's hot from the middle of June. So the you know end of August, beginning of September, and then we get gets really nice again. It's the humidity and it's fall and Indian summer. But uh, yeah, I've, it's, uh, I've, I've gone a lot to Atlanta. I I'm a huge Bra Braves fan since they were in Milwaukee. Oh wow! Yeah, the, you know Hank Aaron days, right? The first game I ever saw was in black and white in a barber shop when I was seven years old. Braves against the Yankees World Series in a black and white TV, and uh, the Braves beat the Yankees. Uh, New Berlin beat uh, Whitey Ford in in that game. I, I will never forget it. You know, oh wow, that's a, that, that's a, awesome. A Braves fan all my life, and I, I went to I went to University of Florida, and uh, in 1969, as soon as they came down to Atlanta. I went. I went to see them play. Yeah, when Ted Turner owned the team. When 
No, before that, the, the attorney came, was there dinner? I don't know. It, it, oh, I think it was just they arrived. That's just when they arrived. They had Rico Carty, they had Hank Aaron, they had uh, Felipe Alou, they had, a, they had a very good team. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they played in Fulton County, which is uh, no longer. They, yeah. they uh, you know, they just, yeah. you know, they built a new Brave Stadium downtown, and then they moved up to Cab Cab County. Yeah. And now they got yeah. a battery and the whole development, yeah. and uh, yeah. you yeah. know, at uh, yeah. Truist Park, and uh, you know, it, uh, I saw they won last night, and um, you know, they uh, listen. They, it's a long season, you know. Yeah. You, and, you know, you don't know who's going to end up, who's healthy, yeah. and you, people get hurt, and. Uh, uh, yeah. Who's the outfielder in there? In, in, out, he, uh, the young Acuna? guy. Yeah, Acuna. Acuna. He looks like he he got he got uh, he went to catch a ball and he got beamed in the leg or whatever. And I think they had to take him out all you know mm -hmm. out of the field. So I don't even know if the guy's hurt or not. Right? Yeah, but no, he's okay. He's okay. Okay, because yeah. I saw it on. I saw. I, I always like looking at. I watch Sports Center at the end of the day and I'm laying in bed and my wife's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm I'm trying to catch some scores here." You know, and uh, I saw the play where he got he went to catch the ball and the yeah. ball came down on his knee and he was hobbling. And I'm like, oh, no, man, we can't lose that guy. You know, the guy's a phenom, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what a yeah, very exciting player and uh, yeah. from the island. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, he, he's a Venezuelan. He's from no, Venezuela. Venezuela. I was doing, it, it, he's from Venezuela. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Plenty of, of okay. native Puerto Ricans that are, are, are playing in, in, you know, the MLB. You know, there, there's a ton of them. There's a ton so, of them. Yeah. But Felipe Olu, God, that's a name from the past. I haven't heard that forever. You yeah. know, you know. So uh, one of my good, one of my good clients, uh, Daryl Cheney, he played for the Cincinnati Reds, yeah. and then he played for the Braves too. Yeah, he's one of my buds, and uh, he did one of uh, his keynote speakers uh, at one of my events, and um, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. And anyway. Uh, I'll just tell this really short story because it's a Braves and then we'll get into your story. Anyway, when uh, Daryl was growing up, uh, Ernie Banks was his, uh, from the Cubs, was like his idol. All right. So when he was like eight or nine years old, Ernie Banks was like at his, uh, you know, uh, baseball uh, dinner when he was growing up. And they called Daryl up and Ernie said, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? He goes, I want to be a professional baseball player just like you. So anyway. He made his way up. He get they're playing in in uh, Wrigley Field, and he gets called up bat. And Ernie Banks is on first base, and he goes, "Oh my God, I wonder if this guy's going to remember me. Uh, you know what's going to happen? I got you know I got to get on base." And uh, anyway, I guess he gets a hit, and he gets up to first base, and Ernie Banks puts his uh, arm around him and says, "Welcome to the big leagues." And so he wrote his book. That's the name of his book, "Welcome to the Big Leagues." Wow. But when he told his story at my event, I mean, everybody was in tears. I mean, it was a like tearjerker. They all stand in line and Daryl, you know, signed baseballs and he had his, uh, you know, World Series ring when he was on the Reds. And uh, uh, but it, it was just a great story. So, uh, you know, yeah. uh, you right. know, but I'm just a Yankee living in the South. So I came from Philly. <laughs> but I, I pull for I play pull for all the local teams but when any of the philly teams come in i gotta pull for them you know i mean it's you know we're all transplants you go to a braves game half the half the uh stadium's got the other team's jerseys on you know it, it's yeah. it's a it's a crazy town but uh uh it's a long season and it's yeah. hot there it's a long season. Long season. so the way we're gonna work it is you're gonna kind of tell your story where you grew up where you went to school kids dogs whatever and how you ended up there at 3mg then uh, you'll tell us lessons learned over the last uh, couple of years, any cool projects that you might be doing on the island. And then you'll leave one your contact info and one positive thought or phrase. So with that said, the floor is yours. Tell us your story. Yeah, well, well, David, I was I was born in Cuba in 1951. And uh, I come from a family with my father. He says he's a structural. He was a structural engineer. And in Cuba, he was the president of the engineering school. And uh, he was also commander in chief of all the underground uh, activity against Batista, the, the dictator. And uh, in 1958, when the, when the, how we say, when the revolution won, he became the minister of public works. When, when I was a kid, I, 
I rarely see, saw him, but once he came in, he would take me all, all around to all these projects that he's he's been doing, he was doing, and that he did. Like he 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 constructed the the Havana tunnel, the tunnel the tunnel that crossed the Havana Bay, and he 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 also did the Havana Libre Hotel. But then the revolution turned around in the wrong side. And uh, we had to leave Cuba, and we ended up here in Puerto Rico. Uh, I've been living here for, uh, I am. Uh, I arrived here when I was 11 years old. Uh, I've been here for over 60 years. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm 73 years old. I, uh, I uh, studied high school here, graduated here from a military academy, and then I went to I went to UF when I was 16 years old, 1967. And uh, those of you out there, that's University of Florida, Gator. University Clinton. of Florida, Gator, Gatorland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a Gator. Uh, then there I went. Uh, I, I I was there in 1971. I quit school. I didn't finish. And uh, it was those times uh, where everybody was happy, in peace, and love. And uh, and all of that, but it, it took me. I went to, my father had a factory in Jamaica doing prefabricated houses. And I went to work with him in Jamaica, lived there for two years. We constructed close to 300 prefabricated houses, residences. And uh, until the Castro, uh, Jamaica government turned, turned around and uh, became socialist, Mike and Manley, won the election and he banned my father and anybody name as him like I was. So they took the factory away from him. They and uh, we had to leave for Jamaica. And uh, I got myself and I went then I went I decided to work and go back to school and graduated from the University of Puerto Rico, but of the Maya West campus, this is the West Coast. And uh, it's a technical engineering and uh, agriculture and technical university. I went there. There I became a structural engineer. Uh, I I did some freelance architecture. Meantime, and I also became became a bombonite contractor, which stamped concrete. The, uh, I, I brought it to Puerto Rico and I worked and studied until I graduated. In, I, my father had a, a company here for design called Ray Architects Engineer, established in 1963. And I went to work with him at this, uh, after I graduated. And in 1983, I became licensed. There, uh, I started looking, I always been somebody that would like to work alone. So I started looking for jobs, you know, for opportunities. And uh, looking for opportunities, they, they offered me the design of a ferry terminal on the West Coast where I did my, my, my university when I graduated in Maya West. Now, my first design job was a, 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 a port terminal, a waterfront, in the port of Maya West, but a small one. As a matter of fact, in that time, in 1982, 83, they told me, hey, uh, uh, the, the, the director of the public authority here asked me if I had a license and if I wanted to do a project which had been turned down by an architect because he didn't want to do it. And he said, he told me, hey, it's only $46,000 in which I can pay you. For me, that was heaven. It was my yeah. first project. Sure. So they, from then on, I started doing some, a couple of other ports. I did the, the Fajardo Terminal, Fajardo Bay. Fajardo is in the coast of Puerto Rico. And there, there was a ferry that would go from Fajardo to the, to the Vieques Island and Culebra Island. And uh, that port, that, that, that port I, I, had to, I had to do work for that. And, uh, uh, since then, since then on, I, I then became, I, I then had the opportunity to do a design and build 
a small hotel in 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 Isla Verde, and from then on my career turned turned on. Uh, I, I was I was being called by by people. Uh, being, uh, they told they said I had I had good taste. I had I was responsible. I was fair, and I delivered projects on time. Uh, uh, my father had a, a bunch of projects. He also called me for big hotels, uh, El Conquistador, uh, El San Juan. Uh, I'm not going to say any brands, but those hotels, uh, mm -hmm. those are big hotels that are not very known here in Puerto Rico, La Concha, uh, uh, Condado Plaza, and many of those. Uh, and I, most of the hotels in Puerto Rico I, I have some names into it. Uh, uh, when uh, what else? Uh, well, uh, I did also. I, I had the opportunity also to do work at the Pier Number Four, which at one time was the biggest and most important cruise ship, the Pier in the Atlantic Ocean. It's in the Bay of San Juan. Pier Number. Then I did Pier Number Three. Uh, I, and I, I and I also did the, the design for Pan American Pier One and Three. All of those, all of those Pier Three, Pier Four, Pan American Pier One and Two, they all won excellence excellence awards from the government, from the School of Architects and, and Engineers of Puerto Rico. Uh, they are still in use. They have withstood all the hurricanes and earthquakes that we have because here we have hurricanes earthquake and and uh, and name it you know we receive a lot of rain also and whatever uh, so you know i created a lot of vast experience which has carried me throughout and uh and uh, i've been called to do uh, i've been called to do a uh, survey and opinions to big uh, national American uh, hotel 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 uh, uh, brands chains. They have called, they want to do they, they wanted one of them wanted to do. So I acquired some hotels at Cancun and asked me to go there and had to had to suffer going to Cancun several times and. Uh, I can think of worse fun. places to go, but you know, uh, you know, it's it, yeah. it, it's a job, yeah. right? You know, you someone's got to do it. Yeah, it's a job. It's a job. You got to do it. And especially one day, I'm going to tell you an, an anecdote. At one time, I I went to I went to Cancun and to look for this hotel for this big chain, a big, a big American hotel chain, and uh, uh, and the hotel was being constructed, and the 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 architect in charge of the construction asked me, he was giving me a tour, and he asked me, what do you think? I said, well, this hotel is gorgeous, it's great, but it doesn't have beach, it doesn't have sand. He says, come in, come in, come in two months, and then give your opinion then. So I write this chain, you know, like this, and this, and they ask me, well, oh, sure, plan, plan and go in two months. In two months, I go there, first of all, I didn't, I, I, I didn't know at that time that February 5th, was a Independence Day and nobody worked. So I got there Independence Day and I had to go, I had to suffer in the in a beach, in a bar, looking at nice ladies and nice <laughs> a nice uh, and nice ocean and all of that drinking beer and and just enjoying. That's part of the that's part of the hard life I had to I sometimes I had to live. And uh but then then in that in that the day after I went to the side and there was a barge outside in the ocean, sucking sand, white, beautiful sand, and creating a beach. And it was a spectacular. And I asked I asked them because here in Puerto Rico or in the United States, you just cannot do that. Mm -hmm. I asked them, you know, how you can do that? He says, Well, that's called a uh, tourism. Uh, uh, there was a special law uh, that they have tourists. Uh, any any tourism, you can do whatever you want. So, 
So it was, uh, you know, it, it was fun. You know, sometimes this, this thing is, it was fun. Another time we designed a, a, a swim with the dolphin lagoon at the El Conquistador Resort many years ago. Uh, and I had to go to a big, big island in Hawaii to swim with the dolphin, stay there about four or five days, take a helicopter and go and go to the uh, over over to the volcano, swim with the in the black black beach and and touch all these fishes and and purposes and and, and tortoise and all of that and just. Uh, when you work in hospitality, you got you got to enjoy it sometimes. So it's been a good it's been a good ride and lots of fun. How uh, how many how many uh how many projects have you worked on in your career? Oh, thousands. Oh. Well, not a thousands, but uh, but uh, close to two three hundred. But I, I've been I've been lucky. In my life I've been first of all. I've been, I've been able to, to how do you say, take the opportunities and take them and 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 be able to 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 enjoy them and to take them and 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 live, live it. When I take a project, I live the project. I enjoy the project. I try not to 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 be too passionate with them, but. You know, I can't, you know, I, I'm always, I always try to do my best and I always want to do what I, I've done. I've done over 200, 300 projects. And, uh, and at the same time, I have a, I have a, 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 a medium sized office. Once, once with my father and my brother, we had 90, 90 professionals working for us. We were oh, the wow. third, the, the third biggest company in Puerto Rico. And, it, but in, in 2004, and my father retired. My brother and I split up. He he kept the most engineering. I went but I went and and created 3MG, and uh, and 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 how you say and, and I brought architects and I do we do architecture with the structure and we do civil engineering. We uh, we we sub we sub MEP. Uh, what, was, what, what was your what was your favorite project that you did over the years? Oh, my favorite project. Well, uh, uh, it was a project that changed my life because I met one of the greatest person I ever met in my lifetime, right? and it, it really it, it was. When Hurricane Georges passed Puerto Rico, Hurricane Georges passed Puerto Rico and crossed the island, and I, I was doing work at El Conquistador, which is in the east coast of the island. It's a huge resort, uh, uh, 700, 758 keys, so it's it's a huge resort, and uh, and it's in top of a cliff. So the hurricane really affect that. I received a call from a person called Steve Harvey. And uh, he wanted to meet me because he knew that I was the, one of the ones who designed the, uh, the first $100 million project in Puerto Rico. And, uh, and so he called me and he says, we need your help over there. And I said, what can I help? He says, well, the hotel, it's a little bit destroyed. We have a big. We have a company from the states that came, and we need somebody to guide them, to give them, give them. So Puerto Rico had no lights. There was no electricity. There was no, no water. You know, it was a mess. So I talked to my brother and father, which we were in the same office at that time, and we had all of it. We had MEP. We had a structural. We have architects. So and they had. They had generators they had uh, they have water they had generators so i thought so we i rented two vans i put computers i put desk i put printers i put and i sent the whole team over there 
The next day, when Mr. Harbin got there, we had we had a porta cochere. We had set up an office. We had runners going to the rooms with walkie-talkie. There was no there was no cell phone or anything like that with walkie-talkie. And we needed the, we we need the we had Polaroids and hey, we set up we, we were we were giving the contractor every every single detail at the moment. For him to repair, the contractor says, "I have never seen something like this in my life before. These people are awesome." From then on, Mr. Harvey, which he said he's a great uh, hospitality general manager, project manager, you know, for me is the best. He calls me. He had called me for everything. Well, what happens here in the island? And uh, I met one of the greatest persons. So that would be my favorite part. My favorite design was the first design I ever did, which was the ferry terminal, which which set me up and 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 make me make me sure that I can do it. I had nobody to work with me. I I did all the design just with one draftman, and uh, when it was constructed, the contractor came to me and says, "You know, Mr. Ray." I cannot find any change order in this project. You have <laughs> even drawn, no, you have even drawn, I have, I, have, I, I did, I draw, I drew the, the, the screws when in the hinges and everything, you know, like he, 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 you know, he had, he had everything. He had, not, so I didn't win any money, but I, I want respect and I want another project. Interesting. You know, people don't realize that on the island, like when when the hurricanes come in and they do damage, a lot of the materials they all have to get shipped to the mainland. Am yeah. I correct on that? It's yeah. not like you can just call your local Home Depot and get sheetrock no. or whatever. Everything's no. got to be shipped in. Yeah. Right? Everything, everything got to be shipped in by 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 boat, by ship, or by plane. Plane. And uh, it's not like if you are in Georgia, you have Florida, you got Alabama, you got Tennessee, you got you got South Carolina, you got North Carolina, you got it. everybody can help you. Here, there's just a big ocean. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so the logistics are interesting. The logistics are interesting. Right now, I'm working in, uh, I'm getting, you know, like I'm 73, so I'm getting a little bit old. Uh, I got my, my daughter with me working, and she says she's a, also a structural. Uh, as uh, engineer and, and and also project manager, and I got architects and this office will we always we keep on and I'm, I'm gonna I'll keep on working till till the day because I love what I'm doing, you know yeah. it, it keeps me going and and what I'm doing is I I just got Maria the Hurricane Maria has given me the opportunity to to complete the Maya West Port. The Maya was port after the project we have just designed. Uh, when Hurricane Maria, Hurricane Maria, uh, we did some studies and there were some waves that touched the west coast that were 40 feet high. Wow! So it, it ripped the waterfront of that of that uh, port, and I, I I won the project and I was selected to to design the waterfront. So I started with a small piece of the waterfront of of Mayagüez, and I right now late in my career, I'm finishing the rest of the waterfront. So that's something that fills me a lot because I'll be able when I when I, I I'm able to tell my grandkids, hey, you know, like, like that port, most of it, of all of it. You know, uh, your grandfather was the one who designed it. Was the one who, and it's a big port. It's a big, it's one of the big cities of Puerto Rico, and uh, so it's you know it's it has given me a lot of joy and a lot of uh, a, a lot of a lot, a lot of self self esteem and self enjoyment uh, being being able to do that now at this step of my. Is your daughter gonna is your daughter gonna take over three MG? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. one of the M's is her name. 3MG comes. Uh, my oldest daughter 
which is, she is called Maria del Carmen. She is the engineer who is, who is here with me. My my youngest daughter called Maria Teresa. She's an architect that lives in North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, I love Wilmington. Yeah, and uh, and and the other the other M. It's myself, Manuel. That's my first name. And G is for my wife, Paul Graciela. Nice, so, nice. Grace. Well, listen, I mean, it's uh, it's the best to keep, you know, the, the family legacy going in if you can keep your kids in there. I mean, my family's in demolition recycling. We've uh, uh, been in business since 1888. So when I was growing up and uh, I was playing down in the scrapyard and on the cranes and uh, my grandfather was a combat engineer underneath uh, Patton. He was in the cavalry in World War II and he rebuilt all the bridges and that the Allies had bombed and he was in the rebuilding effort. But uh, we've got these old Super 8 uh, 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 movies that we transferred to disc and uh, all of the tanks and Jeeps after World War II that came back, they all came to our yard and you know they were burning up. So we were in recycling and sustainability before that stuff was even a word. Uh, but as a grandson, uh, in uh, it was outside of Philadelphia where I grew up, uh, it's called Mayor Pollock Steel. For those of you who don't know it, just look it up on the web, Mayor Pollock, P O L L O C K dot com. Anyway, uh, all the grandsons, we you know, uh, the, the you know, the, the uh, daughters, they weren't they weren't involved. It was just a it was a guy thing. It's the way it was in the you know the way my family was. So when you got your license at sixteen, you had to go and work in the scrapyard. So uh, I uh, I shoveled asbestos. I laid railroad tracks. I learned how to weld. I had to keep my eye out for the overhead cranes. Uh, I did all every summer, you know. And I was making good money at that time. I'd make about you know two three hundred dollars a week. That was big money in the set, you know. And um, uh, now it's fifth generation. My cousins. I'm sixty years old. I was born in sixty three. When you you know. And uh, I think Steve Spurrier was the quarterback at, at Florida when you were there, right? Well, I, I arrived the year after he, after he he won the he graduated uh, he graduated in 1966. Okay, so he won the Heisman then, right? Is yeah, right? he won the Heisman then. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was born in '63, so you know I'm I'm right behind you. I'm 60. I'll yeah. be 61 here in June. So you're not that much yeah. older than me. You know, we're both old. But you're 27. I'm 26, as far as sure. I'm concerned. No. So. But I had the same thing. I, I grew up with, with uh, you know, I had a rector set. I was down on the thing. And then I could have gotten into construction. And uh, uh, I did my retail experience uh, after I got out of school at University of Denver and uh, worked for Levitt's. Uh, my father was in upholstery and Gary Levitt's the owner. And my dad were pilots. They were buds. And that's how he got the line into the store. And I did everything there. I scotch guarded. I was a picker. We I did the merchandising on the floor. And then uh, so but all of those things that I learned, I took as I became a publisher. So even though, you know, I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm basically a, I'm a constructor. I build a magazine every month. I used to do it with ink and paper and, you know, now I do it digitally, but I'm still a builder. So I have, you know, my my biggest issue I ever did, like the project that you just talked about, the one on the cliff. That was one of your coolest ones. My biggest issue I ever did was in like 2006, I think it was. I had uh, Johnny Rockets on the cover, and I had Rob Bidnos. He was, uh, you know, the construction manager there, and I think it was 276 page issue. You know, quarter of a million dollar magazine, revenue wise. And um, uh, I had one other one when I had Federer, I had Bernie Reese on there too. That was another big one there too. I think that was like 2005. But those were the biggest. They was like a wedding catalog. And uh, I still look at them when I grab them. I'm like, darn, man, I, I probably paid a boatload of postage mailing these things out. But when I look back at, at all of those things, uh, everything that I learned from, you know, my grandfather growing up, he was in, he was in military. So, you know, I used to take the flag up and down every day, you know, sit down meals. I, you know, I went to prep school. And um, but all of those things that I learned, I've, I've applied to, you know, myself and my business and uh, it's just a uh you know i'm like you i told my wife I, I she goes you know like they just had the lottery up here it was a billion a billion and a half dollars so she goes what if we won that money i said well you got to give about you know half of it to the government tax wise you know but i can live off of 600 million dollars and i said babe i'm still gonna work she goes why would you work i go i cannot sit around and hit golf balls or fish every day 
I got to, as long as I don't get arthritis or, or my eyes don't go and I still have to wear the readers now, you know, look at, you know, little stuff. But I said, look, I'm going to work until the day, I, you know, I'm done. And uh, I just, I just had to stay busy. I just couldn't, you know, like I said, hit golf balls of fish and so forth. I mean, probably take a little more time off, but uh, I have to stay busy. So I, when you said that, I'm, I'm, you know, the same thing. And, uh, you know, it, uh, you know, because I like what I do, you know, and I don't get bored. Every, every time I, you know, I, I put a magazine, I'm like, hey, I built that, you know, and and I'm proud of it. And some are bigger than others. I mean, last month I put out a 178 page issue. This next issue I do, I don't know, it might only be 120. I have no idea, but uh, it depends, you know, when we finish it. But uh, it, it's it, it's been fun. And uh, uh, but like I said, I come from a construction family and uh, it's just it's just in, ingrained in my blood. And, you know, it's funny. All my cousins, when we were all 16. We were all working at the scrapyard. And my uncle Frank was the superintendent at the scrapyard. And he was one mean son of SOB. And if you were like two seconds late, you had to be there at seven o'clock in the morning. And if you weren't there on time, you know, you were in big trouble, you know, and may rest in peace because, you know, he passed, you know, years back. But he was but he, I'll tell you, he he uh, ingrained in me. Yeah. Always be early. Don't be late. You know, yeah. do everything, you know, to the best of your ability. And, uh, you know, I used to, you know, have dinner with my grandfather. He's like, you know, so how's it going? You know, I, I used to complain. And my grandfather like, listen, your Uncle Frank knows what he's doing. You listen to everything that he tells you to do. OK, he tells you for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I can look back and I'm like, yeah, he you know, I picked that up from him. So uh, uh, there was one time I was we were building these uh, these uh, sandblasting paint booths for the train cars to come in. So they'd sandblast them. They would repaint them. And uh, the guy that owned the company uh, went to University of Denver, where I went. And uh, so we had just welded the uh, the paint booths and, and we laid the railroad tracks, you know, out of the uh, factory into where the where the tracks were to connect them. And uh, the guy came in to take the tour and uh, the suit, the uh, project manager, name, his name was Dominic. And Dominic goes, David, you got to go up there and unhook the overhead crane. Uh, and I'm like, Dominic, I am not going on top of that. He goes, you just welded it. Don't you trust your own welds? I'm like, yeah, but it's a 25 foot fall into the railroad tracks. You know, I don't even know what the thing is. He goes, your grandfather's here with the, with the client. Get up there and undo the crane. So I went up there and I unhooked it and then I came down. And that night, I'm, I still remember, I sat down at dinner and my grandfather looked at me and he goes, hey, was that was that pretty hairy being up there taking like, unhooking the crane off the uh, booth? I said, yeah, I was scared. I was scared to death. He goes, good job, you know, because you didn't show it. You just went up there and you, and you did it. And uh, I'll remember that till the day I die, you know. And uh, but just, you know, facing your fear, but you, you trusting what you've done mm -hmm. and uh, all of that. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it's made me have thick skin. But I still remember that. Dominic, David, up there, unhook the crane. I'm like, no. He said, what do you mean, no? I got the client's here. Get up there. Grandpa sits here, man. You got to get up there. So, uh what a great story. Family, Cuba, Jamaica, to Puerto Rico. Uh, what a what an amazing story, you know. And uh, I once I once had to do a design for uh, in Martinique. The owner the owner was in Paris, France. Martinique is a, a state of France. And meetings were in Paris at the Chandeliers in, in one of the hotels over there. So it, it's nice. Yeah, it, absolutely. It, 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 it is nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, talk about like in 2020, when everything got, you know, the roller coaster started, everything was just, you know, who knows what, no one knew what was going to happen. What lessons did you learn through those years? Because first of all, you're on the island. And second of all, you know, it was different, you know, here in the state, we went from depending on what the regulations were state to state, we're going to determine if your projects were going to be affected and, you know, product shortage and all that. Tell us how you weathered the storm there, you know, from an island point of view. Well, in the 2020, we had the COVID. Uh, uh, and uh, I kept the office together. Every, we, we were shut down, everybody had to be at, at, at the home. I created, a, I, I, a, we had a couple of projects that we could would keep working on it, but uh, 
I, 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 I wouldn't, I couldn't, you know, there was no, no way to invoice or, or to really generate any income, uh, but I kept the office together. Uh, I make sure that uh, at least the minimum payments were uh, my, all, all my people, uh, you know, that, uh, to, to get to my people. Uh, so, and at the, once, once we started working, how grateful everybody was that uh, we had weathered this storm, that they were able to keep their family together and do their, their payments and, and all of that, uh, make, make our office a little bit more stronger and, 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 and more, more as a family. And everybody came out more committed to get, to get everything back and better. So, so we learn, we learn how to, how to stick it, stick it together and, and make it happen. So uh, I learned that uh, to be good to the people that you would, that you have working for you and to, to, to respect them and, uh, and, uh, and make sure that they, that they and their family go, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's really worth it. It's, it's really worth it. It's a, it's a money you spend that will come back. It, it will come back tenfold. tenfold. Yeah, you know, I, I've had a lot of guests on the show, end users, architects, contractors, vendors, the companies that are standing still today, just like myself, you had to make decisions, you had to weather the storm, but there are so many companies that are so much more stronger, they've got better, uh, uh, you know, communication skills, and just their overall company has prospered more than it, you know pre pre shutdown, and uh, mm -hmm. they 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 found out that their you know their employees can work out of their house, they can trust them, and they're more productive. Some of these companies have more the most productive years in, in their company's history. They probably could have taken more business if they had more PMs or superintendents, which are very tough to find these days. Right. Um, but it, you know, you're right. Even though you're out on the island, that's the same thing that we went on the states. So many companies say, you know, they learned, they they turned on a dime, they rolled the dice, and now now, you know, we're pretty much out of it. Yeah, there's still some bumps in this and that that are going on. But all in all, uh, it was a learning experience for everybody. And everybody that's standing here today, just like you and I are, are talking, that uh, I mean, I'm a completely different company than I was in 2020. I was a print face to face guy. Now I'm a digital person, but mm -hmm. it, you know, I never had three and a half, three, three and a half million people hitting my website, you know, before, but I still had very, you know, it, but I'm still doing what I'm doing. I'm just doing it in a different way, but man, did I learn a lot about my company, but keeping your, your people employed was the most important thing to me mm -hmm. uh, because I, because I can't, you know, I'm not the artist. I'm not the edit. Well, I, I, I do everything, you know, I mean, I changed the zero. I mean, but the people that helped me, they're like family to me. So, and I've been with them a long time. So my whole thing was, you know, look, I got to make sure these people stay employed and we got to make the best decisions. And, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, when we went digital, it was scary. You know, I mean, it just was, I was like, oh my God, man, what am I going to do? These pe are people going to stay with me and this and that. And uh, God willing, you know it, it, you know, it all worked out. But I I just kept a positive mindset. You know, I just put the blind on and I said, look, we're going to do this. And here I am today. So, uh it uh, what a great story. Uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, yeah. If um, if there if, if someone wanted to reach out to you on the island and they were thinking about you know expanding in, in Puerto Rico or whatever, how would they reach out to you to bounce? Well, the they can they can email me mray at three mg dash pr dot com or they can call me directly to my mobile. 787-375-5770. You know, I, I I work every day and Saturdays. Uh, they can call me anytime. I'll be glad to just call them and and make available, help them out. Even even if they want to use our services or if they just want to call me to find out anything in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is full of incentives, uh, uh, full of incentives for people to come come down and and really make it make it happen and. And work from here. There's a lot of uh, the United States people that have come here 
and uh, there is a there is some, there is a law called Law 60, which really gives a lot of a, a income tax incentives, tax incentives, which which a lot of people have are using it. You know, Americans are moving down and really working from here. Uh, I can think of I can like I said before I can think of worse places to work than in uh, Puerto Rico. You know, well, the, the, our our winter time it's a it's a eighty six eighty five during the day and seventy something at night. Maybe one night we get really cold and it's sixty seven. Ooh. <laughs> yes. So you know, the ocean is really the ocean is really warm. Throughout through the whole year, so it's nice. It's nice living. Well, it's nice living. I'm, uh, I'm coming. I'm coming down. It's on my bucket list, and uh, sure. uh, you know it. Uh, uh, anyway, listen. If you're out there and you're going to go to Puerto Rico, first of all, you should call this gentleman just to hook up, maybe and show you some stuff. But there's this. You know, the, uh, you're on LinkedIn too, right? Are you on LinkedIn? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn too. Yeah. yeah. So look, you got a phone, you got an email, you got a LinkedIn. You know, sure. so if you're doing a project, or you're thinking about doing something, or maybe you're thinking about moving and, and you know, working on the island or whatever, call Mr. Ray up here and uh, have our conversation. You never know where it might go. And uh, uh, if anybody wants to reach me, you can get me at David C at CCR Mag.com. And, uh, you know, listen, the way that Manny's one of my advertisers. OK, so the way that Manny got on here. I had a cancel on my podcast and my engineering report's coming up. So Manny, I sent him the link. He uploaded it, uploaded his uh, information and then I looked at it and I always asked the question, do you want to be on the podcast? And he said, yes. And I had just gotten the cancel. So after he got his form, I emailed him back. I said, thanks for sending me the form. Hey, are you free tomorrow? Uh, give me a time and we can do a recording. That's how he got on here. All right. So uh, if you don't send me anything, I can't look at it. So. And listen, we post so much stuff every day. It could be an anniversary. It could be a charity golf tournament. It could be a new project that you're doing. Uh, we look at everything. Very tough to get in the magazine, but we have all these other social media channels and stuff. We post everything. We send you the link. We want you to share it. So it's it's good for your SEO, which is your search engine optimization. That's how Google finds you, and they can point you to, uh, you know, you get found on the, out on the web. But uh, it's like buy, it's like buying, you know, if you don't buy a lottery ticket, you can't win. So if you don't send me anything for me to look at, I can't publish it or I can't put it up on the web or, you know, or reach out and say, hey, be a guest on the, uh, you know, on the podcast. So, uh, yeah, send it to me. Let, let us be the, you know, we'll, we'll judge the book by its cover. And listen, if you, we find a place for everything. So, and, and I look at all my emails. I have a digital special heavy, but listen, I'll, we will come back to you. I'll, you know, we turn around the time, you know, TAT, it's probably 28, 48 hours and, and we'll, you know, we'll get it done for you. So, um, as we finish up, Manny, if there was one positive thought or phrase that you'd want to leave with our listeners out there in commercial construction coffee talk, what would it be? Okay, right the way you were given. That's a, what a surfer a motto is. You know, you got the wave. If you surf, you got a wave. You ride it. If it's it, it, it's been given to you, do the best you can do with that wave. I like because it. May, maybe that wave will never come back. So, so it's a. When I was young, I used to. That was one of my passions to go to surf, and uh, and and it's true. It's been true to life. If I wouldn't have taken the opportunities. And the setbacks that I've taken in my life, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't have the life, or, or, or I, have, I wouldn't have done all the big projects that we have done. And I'm sure you remember the first time you uh, you went through the tube on a wave. Am I right? Oh, I remember that. That that, that you never forget. Yeah. No, I, I was I was in a house at the beach, so I remember. You know, we surfed, and I remember my first tube. You know, in in Atlantic City, I remember it. You know. Yeah. And, like, and, and and also the worst and the first uh, splash, I don't know how you said in English, you know, like a crash that you wipe out, that, that wipe out that you that you that you that you that you, that you receive. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's also. So that's also. What a great car. Ride the wave yeah. and as long as you can. And, yeah, uh, ride the wave you are 
given as long as you cannot depend on as best as you can. Yeah. That's you know, every day I, I have a, a my I took digital classes last year and a half, so I I, I have a business page I nurture. So I I've been running five, six miles a day. And uh, I cool down and I always do a little video and I throw a little positive phrase. I might steal that from you, by the way. Uh, but, la but the other night I was talking, I was uh, talking about, you know, horses. And I said, look, I grew up with horses and here's the gig. Uh, if you get bucked off, you got to get up, brush the dust off. You got to get back in the saddle. Giddy up. up. That's just Giddy the way up. it is. You're going to, you get, you know, if you're not making mistakes, if you're not getting hurt and you're not feeling any pain, you're not going to grow. So if that horse bucks you off, you got to get back in that saddle immediately. And mm -hmm. uh, you got to tell, and that horse will know that, hey, man, this guy's not scared of me. You know, it's like yeah. dogs. They know when you're scared. Yeah. You know, we're both dogs. You, you know, yeah. it's the same concept. So, uh, but uh, I think, I'm, you know, I have a late flight down to Dallas uh, doing a boys weekend with my son. And uh, he uh, he's in aviation and we're going down to look at some things. And anyway, uh, uh, I, I told him that I was... I, I want to do my video, but go out run and do my video before I get out of the airport. So I think I'm going to use your wave thing on my little video here. If you give me permission, I'm going to use it. All right. Hey, no, hey, that's any surfer, any surfer. So it's not mine only. It's yeah. a lot. It's out of a lot of people. All right. Well, I'm going to add a little bit, you know, I'll send you a link yeah. to it so you, so you can see, you know, but I always use a pod slot and I always like, you know, you know, yeah. uh, but I just use used the horse one. I was like, hey, use it. Use you know, it. got to get back on. If you gotta catch a wave, you got to ride as long as you can. Yeah. And then you got to get back and catch another one. Yeah, you know? yeah. use it, use it. Use yeah, it. absolutely. So okay. a couple of things before we uh, we sign off here. Number one, if you're on a construction site, we want you to be safe, okay? Because we want you to get home, be able to have dinner with your, your family, your wife, your husband, your kids, your dogs, your cats, whatever. Catch some rest and be able to do it again the following day. Number two, we want you to stay hydrated, okay? You get dehydrated, you get, you get headaches, some mistakes happen. As an athlete, I can tell you, you know, you want to play that well. So make sure you're drinking water, put some electrolytes powder in there, and the summer's coming, it's getting hot, you got to stay hydrated. And last but not least, hit the like button on there. Come on, hit the like button, become a subscriber on my channel. That way we can have the algorithms on YouTube. You can find this uh, story, amazing story on Mr. Ray. And uh, Cuba, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, I mean, uh, this man's seen a lot of stuff. So hit the like button so we can ever, you know, so we can find you, everybody can find it and watch it. So Manny, pleasure for uh, finding time to, uh, you know, be a, be a guest on Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. I'm honored to be speaking with you. Thank you for being a CCR advertiser as well. And uh, any final thoughts before we sign off? No, I, I enjoyed it very much, and, uh, and just uh, let, you know, keep me in touch with all all of what's happening. You know, like uh, I get the magazine, I I read a lot of uh, a lot of the articles, and I look at the advertising. So it's a good it's it's good it's a good good magazine. I like it, and uh, I'll I'll be keeping advertising with you. So so it's a it's nice. It's a, it's, it's a nice relationship. Well, we appreciate the support. And and, sure. and and that goes to all you other advertisers out there. I can't do what I do without you, especially sure. and attendees and, and everything else that goes on to running a magazine. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. but, you know, without your support and your, and, mm -hmm. and your belief in me and, the, and my vote of confidence, you know, for me, mm -hmm. you know, that's priceless to me. So uh, thank mm -hmm. you for uh, being, you know, a valued supporter. So with that said, Manny, say goodbye from Puerto Rico. Goodbye to all, and I uh, hope you have a great, uh, great day and and enjoy and be happy. There you go. And I'm going to sign off from uh, Sugar Hill, just below the Buford Dam uh, on Lake Lanier, about uh, 25, 30 miles north of Atlanta. It's got about 600 miles of coastline, and uh, the water, uh, the lake's getting busy, and the water is uh, a little nippy, but. Uh, you can go into it without a wetsuit, but uh, it, it's going to be, it'll be 85 here before you know it, it'll be a bathtub. But uh, everybody, uh, you got the weekend coming up. Uh, enjoy, remember, mindset's everything. Get rid of all those negativity thoughts. Only put positive wavelengths in there. And uh, Manny, I look forward to seeing you uh, when I come down to Puerto Rico. You, you sure. and Hermini are the, are the people that I'm going to reach out to first, man, because I want, I want, I want to see, uh, uh, you know, all the local stuff. And uh, right. see some really cool stuff. 
And, and to all you out there, commercial construction coffee talk. We will see you next time. So uh, once again, Manny, thank you so much, and we will see you all. Cheers, everybody. Have a great weekend ahead. All right, right. Manny, you're the best. Thank you so much. Bye.